It is the two-year anniversary today of the COVID lockdowns. Two long years. We all thought it was going to be a couple of weeks. Then we thought maybe it goes until Easter at the latest. Well, two Easter's have come and gone. We're coming up on the third now. And while in some ways it seems like the COVID measures are going away, in other ways they seem to be in place. You still have to wear a mask on an airplane. The national emergency authorization has not gone away, but Biden has actually said that he'll veto it if if the House and the Senate vote to take it away. Dr. Fauci has gone into witness protection, but he's still around in his post at NIAID. Will COVID ever be over? This is Verdict with Ted Cruz. This episode of Verdict with Ted Cruz is brought to you by American Hartford Gold. New inflation numbers are out and they are the worst this country has seen in nearly 40 years. The price of gas, exorbitant. What is it, $7 a gallon in California? The price of housing, up. The U.S. national debt, way up. And with our current administration printing and spending trillions of dollars, Experts and people of common sense, you don't have to be an expert, don't see it getting better anytime soon. So how do you protect your money, your retirement, and your savings? Well, when times are turbulent, Americans like you turn to real assets like physical gold and silver. American Hartford Gold can show you how to hedge your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. All it takes to get started is a short phone call, and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your front door or inside your IRA or 401k. And they make it easy. If you call them right now, they will give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So don't wait. Call them now. Call 855-768-1883. That's 855-768-1883. Or text CACTUS to 65532. Again, that's 855-768-1883. Or text CACTUS to 65532. This episode of Verdict is brought to you by Thompson Cigar. Now, I don't have to tell you that the gentleman on this show likes cigars, so does my husband. In fact, I'd call them all a little obsessed with cigars, and they particularly like the smorgasbord of options offered by Thompson. That's why you've got to check out Thompson Cigar as well, whether you are working from home or just kicking back after a week of being essential, there is no better way to relax than with a premium cigar. Thompson Cigar has the best prices on the biggest brands in the business, from Macanudo to Monte Cristo. So if you're looking to try new, rare, top-rated blends, but you don't want to splurge on boxes, well, that's okay. Check out Thompson's Cigar Tour. It's a smattering of five different blends delivered to your doorstep each month. Now, my husband loved when uh, when he got his smorgasbord of different options here. And Michael's been a fan of Thompson even before they became a partner on the show. No one has more selection than Thompson does. Their customer service is the best, so sit back. Take a break from all the craziness with a cigar from Thompson Cigar Company. These guys rarely do offers, but right now Thompson is offering you 15% off orders over $75 or 20% off orders over $99. To take advantage of these incredible savings, simply go to thompsoncigar.com and use our promo code CACTUS when you're ready to check out. That website is thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, cigar.com, and use promo code CACTUS. This episode of Verdict with Ted Cruz is brought to you by Genucel. Now, before you skip this ad, I know I look at the analytics. I can see when you guys skip these ads. Just listen to this one. Gentlemen, you know that your wives use your razor when you're unaware. I, I do this to my husband. I'm still not sure that he is aware of this. Likewise, we ladies know our husbands use our skincare products when we are not looking. And that's okay. That's okay. So let me introduce you today to Genucel. Bags and puffiness under the eyes are a problem for millions of Americans, men and women. Until now. Introducing the new Genucel Serum with plant stem cell technology for under eye bags and puffiness. Susan from New Jersey wrote, I've been using Genucel for a couple months. The puffiness around my eyes is gone. Even the crow's feet and small lines have disappeared and haven't come back. I love your product. I use it under my eyes, around my cheekbones, and on my eyelids. It's not only Susan, folks. My favorite product of Genucel's is the instant effects. You will literally see results in the first 12 hours or your money back. I guarantee it. If you order now, you can save big on Genucel's risk-free introductory offer. Just go to genucel.com slash cactus. That's Genucel, G-E-N-U-S-E-L dot com slash cactus. Order now and use my special promo code CACTUS to save an extra 10% off your order today. That's genucel.com slash CACTUS. Welcome back to Verdict with Ted Cruz. I'm Michael Knowles. Senator, please, you're on Capitol Hill. Tell me, is there ever going to be an end to the COVID lockdown measures? Yes, but it's going to happen over Democrats' dead bodies. (laughs) Uh, They don't want it to happen. They are The Biden White House is fighting tooth and nail. Uh, As you noted, Joe Biden just extended the the airline mask mandate for another month. 
Why? Because they want a virtue signal. It, it makes zero sense. It is asinine. But there is good news. Hmm. So the good news is the Senate voted today. I just finished voting on a resolution to end the airline mask mandate. And that resolution in the Senate, it passed. It passed with a big bipartisan margin. It passed with eight Democrats who voted for it. Here, I'll read you the Democrats. You have Bennett from Colorado, who's on the ballot. You have Cortez Masto from Nevada, who's on the ballot. You have Maggie Hassan from New Hampshire, who's on the ballot. You have Kelly from Arizona, who's on the ballot. <laughs> you have Cinema from Arizona, who's on the ballot. You have Jackie Rosen from Nevada, who's helping out Cortez Masto, who's on the ballot. You have John Tester in Montana because he realizes he doesn't live in a communist state. And we have Joe Manchin from West Virginia because he realizes he doesn't live in a communist state. I'm noticing a theme here, Senator. It, it, it is people who realize this is idiotic. Mm. Now, every other Democrat voted for the mandate. Uh, they, they all lined up like lemmings to jump off the cliff. Look, on the face of it, the airline mask mandate makes no sense whatsoever. And, and I, everyone knows it. Everybody does. You think about what we're told. Okay, you're sitting on an airplane which has got fancy fil filtration systems. Apparently, they clean out 99.9% .9 of the particles in the air. The rules are you must have a mask on. Everyone will die if you don't yep. until you pick up a Diet Coke. Mm -hmm. When you have a Diet Coke in your hand, no mask needed. You can laugh. You can spit. You can, you can do whatever you want. Everything is safe. You put the Diet Coke down. I just recently had a flight with a really... Uh, intense flight attendant who would literally, as you set your drink down, like, put your mask on yeah. <laughs> in between sips. <laughs> and it was kind of like, dude, just just relax. Just breathe, breathe. You're going to be fine. I never quite understood it. You'd be sitting there and they'd say it is urgent. It's federal law. It's important to the health and, and survival of everyone. You must have the mask on unless we hand you a cookie, in which case, if you get the cookie, then you have to eat it. So I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that the Democrats came out and a good number of them, especially the ones on the ballot, voted to get rid of the mask mandate. And then all the Republicans, I assume, were, were on board with getting rid of the mandate? Well... Yes and no. All the Republicans were on board, except Mitt Romney. <laughs> so, okay, so, so you can still sort of say yes. <laughs> I, I can't defend the guy on this. I, I, I'm sorry. This is idiotic. I, I'm going to give you a, a, a crazy suggestion. How about we have the same rule for Americans across the country who get on airplanes that we have for members of Congress at the State of the Union address. Hmm. We had the State of the Union address two weeks ago. 535 members of Congress. We're all sitting on the floor of the House. I don't think there were five people wearing masks in the entire House chamber. Joe Biden wasn't, although his speech might have been better if he was. <laughs> um, Kamala Harris wasn't sitting right behind him. By the way, she didn't have anything to say. Nothing prevented her from wearing a mask. Nancy Pelosi wasn't. And just about every other Democrat in the chamber was. And we're sitting right next to each other. We're in a closed environment. But none of them were wearing it. So why is it that, that a grandmother flying to visit her grandkids has to put a mask on when Chuck Schumer or Kamala Harris or Nancy Pelosi don't? It is stupid. It is theater. By the way, you know, just a week before the State of the Union, Pelosi was demanding that, that she said no one will be allowed in the House chamber unless they have tested negative, A, and B, unless they're wearing an N95 mask. And I was like, you can kiss my hindquarters. I am not going in there with an N95 mask. So I hadn't decided whether I was going to just skip the whole thing altogether or whether I was going to go in without a mask and see if, see if the House would try to remove me. That actually would have been kind of fun. Dragged out by the police, yeah. That, 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 that would have been great. But, but then what I assume happened is, is someone in Pelosi's office looked at the polling and said, holy crap, this is really unpopular. Do we want Biden's whole speech to be seen with Pelosi and Kamala both wearing masks behind him the whole time? Right. People won't like that. And suddenly the science changed, not the medical science, the political science changed, and they got rid of the mandate. This is garbage, and it's time to get rid of it. Well, if, if that's the case, so it passes the Senate, and you've got a lot of Dems who sign on to it. Uh, 
it's going to go to the House now. Is the House going to take it up? Is the House going to vote for it? Is Biden going to sign it? Look, I assume Pelosi won't take it up, that she'll just leave it and, and won't allow a vote on it. Um, presumably, it would pass the House. If you got eight, eight hmm. Democratic senators who voted for it, I, there are a lot more Democrats in the House who would love to cast this vote. But Pelosi is listening to the crazies in her p- party. What this may do it was such a strong bipartisan vote that what it may do is cause Biden not to extend this damn thing beyond April 18th. It was supposed to expire this week Mm. on March 18th. They extended it a month. Seeing eight Democrats, including almost every Democrat on the ballot, although Raphael Warnock didn't vote for it. He's on the ballot in Georgia. Mm. Apparently he thinks Georgia, Georgians like wearing masks on planes. I, you know, I'll let him explain that, but it may put political pressure on the White House to change. Look, I'll give another example. The NBA, the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving, fantastic player, not allowed to play, hadn't been playing for months. Why? Because the idiotic New York rules say you have to be vaccinated to play, and, and Kyrie chose not to be vaccinated. Now, what this week, it truly illustrated the, the idiocy because New York revoked its requirement that you had to be vaccinated to go to the games. So the fans, Kyrie went to the game as a fan. He's wearing, you know, civilian clothes. He's there as a fan. By the way, no more mask mandate. So he doesn't have a mask on. He's not vaccinated as a fan. Perfectly okay for him to be sitting in the stadium. He hugs his teammates on the courtroom. Perfectly okay for him to hug his teammates as a fan. Apparently he bought a ticket just like you or I would. He went and bought a ticket. (laughs) Um, but New York's rules are so idiotic that as a fan, he can be unvaccinated and not wear a mask. But as a player, he's not allowed to play because they say if your work is, is an indoor performance, you must be vaccinated. I, I don't know, Michael, explain the science to me. Is there something about touching the leather on a ball? Is it like mm-hmm. the reverse of the Diet Coke, that if you touch <laughs> the leather on a ball, suddenly it's deadly and everyone's going to die. Is that how it works? Yeah, I I think it must be. Well, I I am glad to see. I've just noticed it anecdotally that the tide seems to be turning. Even my most liberal, COVID neurotic friends and relatives. But both of them? But but, but all two of them. (laughs) No, they they really have. I mean, I come from New York. I know a lot of people who are pretty on the left. You're you're a New York Yaley. I I assume (laughs) you have have many liberal neurotic. Look, I'll tell you how crazy it is. I just did something 20 minutes ago that you would never believe I did. Yeah. I retweeted Trevor Noah. I hope with some mocking derisive comment. No, 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 no. I, I said, I agree with Trevor Noah. And I said, this is a sign of the apocalypse because he was talking about Kyrie Irving. Hmm. And he said, this stuff makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, he was just, it was a rant about how idiotic it was. And when, when you've lost Trevor Noah as a leftist, yeah. you've lost everybody. And I got to say, I did a press conference today in which I made an, a, a direct appeal to Kyrie. Come to Houston. I'm a diehard Rockets fan. You know, in Texas, we actually are not insane, unlike Manhattan. (laughs) Kyrie, you can start tomorrow for the Rockets. I have no authority to make that offer. And yet I feel confident if you, if you walk in and put on a Rockets uniform, they're going to let you play. He is a hell of a ball player. And the idiocy, by the way, Kevin Durant just this week said it's the dumbest rule I've ever seen. He's allowed to sit in the stands, but not to dribble a basketball. Trevor Noah asked a great question, Michael. I'd be interested in your thoughts. He said, okay, so how does it work? He can buy a ticket. He can go as a stand. He doesn't have to wear a mask. He can hug them, but he can't touch a basketball. What happens if at halftime they call him in to make the halftime shot to win a car? Can he touch a basketball then (laughs) as a fan, but not a player? It just is garbage. And by the way, the NBA just fined him $50,000 because he went into the locker room. It is dumb. And the good news is it is so asinine that, 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 that I think they've, I believe these mandates are on their way out because even the craziest Democrats realize how unpopular it is. Everyone but the loons, well, and Mitt Romney, realize how bad it is. (laughs) That's, I used to say that uh, Senator Romney was my favorite Democrat, but I think those Democrats who voted against the masks, they probably take the cake now. Yeah. The, the way you know it, the way you know it, Senator, that that the, the 
public opinion is moving in this direction is, of course, that Anthony Fauci has gone into the witness protection program. I actually have a documentary series out today on The Daily Wire about Dr. Fauci's history, not just during COVID, but going all the way back to the 80s, the way he's amassed all of this power, the way that the most dangerous place in Washington is the space between Fauci and a television camera. They used to say that about Chuck Schumer. Now you see that really with Fauci. Uh, The the fact that this man has held on to power for so long, we don't know very much about him. Uh, That series is out now. It's Fauci Unmasked. I think they know, and I think that's why they're going to bench the man. They're trying to get through the midterms. And then what happens after the midterms, I guess, as any anyone's guess. So, so look, I, I think we should be understated. I don't think we should engage in hyperbole. And, and I know you have no desire to make a shameless pitch on this podcast. Never. never. But if I hear you hear you right, you're saying that if you don't go immediately watch your documentary <laughs> on Dr. Fauci, that you will go to your grave as a poor, ignorant fool unable to deal with the universe and, and with really a lacking in, in, in basic awareness of anything happening on earth. Is that, is that about right? Senator, that is the subtlety that I have come to expect from you. And it happens to be 100% correct. You've put it very well. This is the time, head on over to Daily Wire to go watch Fauci unmasked. I just wanted us to be as shameless on this as, as you're and my <laughs> friend, Ben Shapiro. Um, and, 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 and if he can brand just about everything on earth, then, then surely mm-hmm. we can, we can pitch your documentary. That's uh, really all I want to do is get one over on Ben. So if I really, I appreciate your help <laughs> and I appreciate the help of all of the uh, verdict listeners. I, I did want to get your thoughts on this regarding Senator Romney, not, not even the mask vote, but he got into a tiff with a former Democrat Congresswoman, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard had published a video about uh, a United States program. It's run of the Pentagon to work with Ukraine on certain biological research facilities. As often happens when this program was exposed or or being discussed in the media, we were told it was a crazy tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. It doesn't exist. Then we found out it does exist, but we don't have, the United States didn't have very much to do with it. Then we found out the United States actually has had this program. It goes back to a treaty from 2005, but the research was totally not dangerous whatsoever. Now we find out hearing from the Pentagon and the State Department, actually there are some very dangerous pathogens in these labs. And if the Russians get their hands on them, this could be a really big problem in Ukraine. So Tulsi Gabbard made a video basically to that effect. And Senator Romney came out and said that she was a traitor who was peddling false Russian propaganda. He he accused an American service member, Tulsi Gabbard, and former member of Congress of treason. That was unfortunate. Uh, Tulsi came back and just body slammed me. I I mean, it was was brutal. Now, Now she, she popped back and said, you have one and one of two choices. Uh, I either uh, respond and refute the facts I'm laying out or immediately apologize and resign from the Senate, which uh, was, <laughs> was probably not terribly understated either. Um, you know, I will say on this issue, there is some subtlety here in that Tulsi is absolutely correct that there are bio labs in Ukraine that there are labs that are studying pathogens, that are studying infectious diseases. Now, that shouldn't surprise anybody. I mean, Ukraine is a first world country. Um, You know, every first world country has labs that are bio labs that are studying pathogens. You know, Ukraine is entitled to have a CDC, uh, just like France is or the the United Kingdom is. That's what, you know, developed countries have is they have medical research into dangerous diseases. So, of course, Ukraine has labs that are studying infectious diseases that presumably have all sorts of infectious diseases they're studying. Um, and the point that, that you and I have made and others have made that when you have labs with infectious diseases, the dangerous pathogens, it's a really bad idea for Russia to be firing missiles and having their tanks shoot at them, just like it's a really dangerous idea for Russia to be firing missiles and having their tanks shoot at nuclear reactors. Like, yeah. Nuclear reactors being hit by missiles is just bad. It's just a bad, bad, bad idea. Same thing if you have a bio lab that is studying dangerous pathogens, dropping a bomb on it is a really bad idea. You don't want dangerous diseases to escape. There is a slight nuance here 
in that there are folks online in the Twitter sphere that are, that are referring to these labs as bioweapons labs. Now, bioweapons labs are different than bio labs. And that one word, it's a small word, but it makes a world of difference. Yep. Bioweapons labs suggest that they're studying how to use biological weapons to kill people, kill civilians, kill soldiers. Um, I have seen no evidence of bioweapons labs in Ukraine. That's not to say they don't exist, but if they do, I haven't seen any evidence of it. Um, I think that's what Romney was jumping on. Hmm. And, and I think it would have been perfectly fine to respond like a reasonable person and say, well, of course, Ukraine has bio labs. Um, and it would be dangerous if Russian missiles or, or, or bombs hit them. Um, the evidence at this point is not clear that Ukraine has bioweapons labs. And so we should be cautious in terms of what we say. That's actually how a rational person would engage. <laughs> but in this hyper politicized shirts and skin tribal, I hate anyone who disagrees. Instead, we just scream traitor, traitor, traitor off with their heads. And I think that's really it'd be better if everyone refrained from doing that. Right. There is obviously a ton of nuance here. I was wondering if you had any updates on what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. The situation seems to be changing constantly. Everyone is pumping propaganda into the air, so sometimes it's hard to know what exactly to believe. Now, one of the big points of contention here has been NATO membership. Yep. A lot of the Russian propaganda says the whole reason for the war is because NATO is going eastward. Ukraine has said they wanted to join NATO. NATO has said, no, the reason for the war is because you, Vladimir Putin, are, are rolling tanks into Ukraine and you want to recreate the Soviet Union. Zelensky himself in Ukraine had been saying that he wants to join NATO. He had been signaling this for, for years. Now, just Today, he's come out and said that he's cooling on the idea of Ukraine joining NATO. You're right. That's a shift from where he's been in the past. Listen, personally, I, I am not a fan of Ukraine becoming a member of NATO. I agree. And, and the reason is, look, being a member of NATO is a big deal. And, and NATO is a military alliance. It's a treaty that under Article 5 of NATO, an attack on one nation is an attack on all the member nations. And it's an obligation. So for example, if, if Russia invades France, we have a treaty obligation under NATO, the NATO treaty, to treat the invasion of France as if it were an invasion of the United States. And under the most traditional interpretation, that means to respond defending France militarily. That is a big deal to make that obligation. And I'm not a big fan of extending uh, treaty obligations to send American servicemen and women into harm's way. I, I think NATO is a very important alliance uh, with, with, with the current NATO members. You know, I can tell you in, in, in 2014, I traveled to Ukraine uh, and I traveled to Poland and Estonia. Uh, right after the Maiden Square, right after, you know, there was a Russian puppet who was in charge of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people rose up and threw him out. And the, the Ukrainian secret police like shot protesters. I walked through the Maiden Square, had a 16 year old girl, a Ukrainian, who was one of the protesters who walked me through the Maiden Square and said, all right, here's where this friend of mine was shot. And you could hmm. see the, the marks of, of bullets where they had hit. Uh, and they just sat there. It was like Tiananmen Square. They sat, sat there executing protesters. But it led to effectively a revolution in Ukraine where they ended up with a democratically elected government that is much more pro-America, much more pro-Europe, much more pro-West, rather than a Russia puppet government. But on that trip, when I was there in Ukraine, meeting with leaders who wanted to be friends with America, as I said, I also went to Poland and Estonia, both of which are, are NATO members. And I asked Poland, I asked in Estonia, I said, all right, what is your confidence if Russia invades you, invades Poland, invades Estonia? What is your confidence that NATO will vigorously act under Article 5 to defend you? And I got to tell you, in both nations, the blood drained out of their face. Hmm. Hmm. And, and, and they had little to no confidence as it is. Wow that NATO would defend them. I, I, I think they basically believed they'd get a stern press release and, and maybe some like, you know, cyber response or something, but not hmm. a robust military response. In both Poland and Estonia, 
Russian tanks in the street are not a distant memory. Uh, right. People who were alive during the Cold War remember Russian tanks in their street. And so it is already, um, defending NATO is already a serious obligation. There are NATO members that feel less than secure. And I think expanding it uh, to, to former Soviet republics is, is a bridge too far. We can support Ukraine. We're providing them with military weapons. We ought to provide them with more military weapons. We ought to use economic power to take away Putin's revenue. But we don't have a treaty obligation right now to send American servicemen and women into Ukraine. And I think that's good. I think that would be a bridge too far. I, I agree. And fr frankly, e before this latest really full-scale invasion by Russia of Ukraine, even when they had just invaded Crimea, had Ukraine yeah. joined NATO at that point, presumably that would have triggered Article 5. That would have been the, the fastest route to a world war that we've ever seen. And so I, I entirely agree with your take. And one hopes that this shift in strategy is maybe pointing the way at some point toward toward a resolution of this conflict and an end to the, the bloodshed. Now, turning domestically for a moment, uh, Joe Biden is trying to blame all of his problems at home on Vladimir Putin. He's doing this, especially we talked last episode about gas prices, and he's trying to do this with inflation broadly. Yep. Now, Senator, I know it's wrong. I know that he's lying. I don't believe him for a second, but I can't quite explain why he's wrong. And uh, now it, Joe Biden is enlisting TikTokers to spread his uh, talking points to the masses of Americans. So how is it the case that inflation is not all Vladimir Putin's fault? Well, listen, I, I will say on this issue, like so many others, uh, the White House has been nothing short of incoherent. Um, as I count them, there are five shifting explanations they've had for inflation. Hmm. So the first explanation they had a year ago is they said, there is no inflation, doesn't exist. Uh, Janet Yellen, actually, I think it was March of last year, almost exactly a year ago, said, there is no inflation. I'd be highly surprised if there was inflation. It just doesn't exist. Pay no attention to your lying eyes. Those numbers going up in front of you, they don't exist. That didn't last very long. Then explanation number two is they said, okay, there's inflation, but it's transitory. It's just briefly here for a moment. You know, I sat down, I had a, a coffee with several other senators and, and Jay Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve. And at the time we pressed him on inflation and this was spring of last year. And that was Jay Powell's answer. It's transitory. It, it just, it's gonna be here for a minute. So yeah, prices are up, but we're not worried about it. It's gonna go away. Mm -hmm. And, and we were like, well, baloney. Um, then the third explanation, um, they, they get progressively more asinine. So, so if there's a asininity meter, I don't know, is that what you would call it, an asininity meter? <laughs> I believe there, there's an asininity scale, yeah. So it, it climbs the asininity. So it doesn't exist. Transitory, that's two. Number three was Ron Klain saying it's a high-class problem. Yes. Yes, it exists. Right. right. We're not saying it's transitory, but it's high class. Mm -hmm. It's it's just the people eating Grey Poupon who are worried about it. It's 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 not regular Americans, you know. It's it's just rich guys, which is a weird explanation because it's actually the opposite. Yeah, um, rich guys don't care. Um, you, you, you know, the gazillionaires, the people who run the Democratic Party now, the Silicon Valley billionaires. What difference does it make to them? John Kerry, when he flies in his, court, his private jet all over the world, he doesn't care on prices. He's got more money than he knows what to do with. It's, it's, it's the seniors on a fixed income who care about it. So high class problem was really an asinine explanation. But then they managed to beat it. And, and, and it, explanation number four, they said, yes, inflation exists. It's not transitory. It's not high class anymore. Everyone's facing it. But explanation number four is inflation is a good thing. It's a sign of just how good the economy mm -hmm. is. Hot diggity damn. We're just booming and inflation. You ought to pop a champagne. Of course, you can't afford a bottle of champagne, but if you could afford a bottle of champagne, pop the cork and celebrate. Maybe a can of beer. Uh, you know, one beer. You could pop a beer mm -hmm. and celebrate uh, because it is so good. Mm -hmm that you ought to be thrilled. It's not happening and it's good that it is, right? Yes, that was explanation number four. Now at this point right now, the polling shows inflation is the number one concern of Americans. I just saw that polling today. 
So the Biden White House is like, oh crap, this is a problem. And so explanation number five is Putin did it. Yeah. And, and that is, and, and they are pushing this through every outlet of propaganda, which means number one, the corporate media. And the corporate media is shilling. CNN is, you know, Brian Stelzer was saying, Putin is causing the inflation. You might think it's Joe Biden, but no, no, no. <laughs> it's Vladimir Putin. And as you noted, these clowns got these TikTok influencers yeah. to push the story that all the inflation you see, it's, it's Putin. And unfortunately, these TikTok influencers are more than happy to just yap these talking points. They presumably don't understand what they're... Okay, one of two things is the case. Either they don't understand what they're saying, or they do understand and they're deliberately lying yeah. because the talking points are absurd. Inflation has been rising. We Just last month, it was 7.9%, the highest in 40 years. Steve Ratner, who was the, the top economic advisor for Obama in the White House, Steve Ratner tweeted out, said, look, these inflation numbers are before the invasion in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and, and they have, you know, the Ukraine number, Russia has very little to do with yeah. this, this is Biden's inflation, he needs to own it. Now, when you got Obama's economic advisor saying this is Biden's inflation, that's pretty compelling. And I, people get it. Right. Now, can, can they blame it on the lockdowns? Can they say, well, you see, uh, because we had to lock down the country, which is obviously a debatable point in and of itself, but because we had to lock down the country, uh, we didn't have as much commerce going on, but now there's a lot more and demand is up. So uh, anyway, if it's not Putin's fault and it is really happening and it's not good, then uh, just blame it on the lockdowns. Is that I've, I've heard some of that chatter from the White House too. So look, they could, and that's actually a more plausible explanation but they're the ones at fault for the damn lockdown. <laughs> I, look, I'm from Texas. We opened up, Florida opened up, uh, you, right. you know, red states. And by the way, these democratic totalitarian petty dictators, is there anything they hate more than the fact that states like Texas and Florida exist? Because right. if you didn't have a handful of red state oases that said, screw you, we're not shutting down our restaurants, we're not shutting down our bars, we're not shutting down our stores, and we're especially not shutting down our schools. Then the whole country would be like New York and California. It would just be, you know, quietly accept the rules and we've seen the contrast, which is powerful. So look, did the lockdowns contribute to inflation? I'm sure they did. Um, but these idiots are the ones that forced the lockdown. <laughs> so either way, it's their screw up. Yep. Right. Uh, before we go, I agree. That is that is actually a very good answer. You should put that on TikTok. There we go. We've got, we should make a verdict TikTok channel. Can you dance? I'll uh, listen. If we can get to a million subscribers on verdict, I will dance on TikTok. I, I do want to get to this question. It, it is, I think, on everyone's mind. It's from the mailbag. This comes from Midsize Dog. I don't think that's his Christian name, uh, but it comes to us from at least the pseudonym. Who would win in a fight? Putin or Elon Musk? Oh, my. Uh... Well, that question is, is slightly different than, uh, than, I guess, Elon Musk challenged Putin to wrestle. Mm -hmm. And if it was simply wrestling, yeah. look, I like Elon, I respect Elon, but Elon is a tech gazillionaire. Putin is a KGB thug. So let me put it this way. If Elon wants to go like getting jello and wrestle Putin, what he does in his own free time for fun <laughs> is his own business. Yeah, but I wish we hadn't introduced the jello. Yeah. I, I'm not willing to wager anything because I think what Elon said is he wants to resolve the Ukraine war with him wrestling Putin. And, and I love Elon, but, but I'm, I don't have enough confidence that he wins that wrestling match to stake the fate of Ukraine on it. Mm -hmm. Now, you ask the question slightly differently, though, which is who would win in a fight? And so a fight is different from wrestling. Mm. On one level, Putin has nuclear weapons in the Russian army, which is not nothing, although right now grandmas in Ukraine are throwing Molotov cocktails on them. Right. Um, but, you know, Elon might be able to send killer robots and self-driving cars <laughs> and like satellite laser beams right. to come after Putin. So a broader fight, I, I, Elon might have a shot in the broader fight, but, uh, but wrestling match, 
Uh, I'm not willing to go with Elon just yet. True. When you fight dirty, including space lasers, all bets are off. What I want to know, what I want to know, and I want Elon to answer this, does he have sharks with lasers on him? <laughs> sharks with friggin' lasers. That would be really cool. Putin wanders by the ocean. A shark with a friggin' laser comes out. And if he does not yet, Senator, put a patent on that. Get that. Don't get, let Elon get that idea for free. That's a good, that's a good idea. Uh, Summit asks... Will the U.S. dollar remain the global reserve currency? Probably. Um, I hope so. Um, there's no doubt as we're putting sanctions on Russia, Russia's trying to find alternatives. China, China wants their currency to replace it. At the end of the day, rever, uh, reserve currency is about who people are confident in and who they want to bet on. Um, you know, I'm reminded of Bill Clinton's former chief of staff, a guy named Erskine Bowles, a couple of decades ago referred to the U.S. economy as the prettiest horse in the glue factory. In other words, there are lots of problems and reasons he was pessimistic about um, the U.S. economy, but we were still much, much stronger than everybody else. Um, at the end of the day, that dynamic is there. China has a serious and, and growing and dangerous economy, but there aren't a lot of people eager to tie themselves to China. China engages regularly in torture and murder and genocide and concentration camps and theft and oppression. And you got to be pretty dumb to say, hey, that's the model I want. Right. Um, you, you know, it, it uh, at the end of the day, doing business with America is better. Um, now, if you keep seeing Democrats print money, and by the way, Democrats with, with Republican complicity. I mean, I mean, on any massive spending bill, you get all the Democrats and half the Republicans. Yeah. So there are, there are some big government Republicans uh, that, 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 that bear some blame as well. But if we keep debasing the currency, it's one of the reasons for the rise of crypto it, is that people are putting their money in crypto because Bitcoin is the new digital gold. And, mm -hmm. and money flows to gold and silver and to assets, hard, hard currency when you don't trust that the paper currency will retain its value. And, and so that, uh, the more Biden and the Democrats devalue our currency, the more vulnerable it gets and the more people will flee to alternatives. And some of those will include foreign currency, whether the Euro or, or the Chinese Yuan. Final question from Shania. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Okay, this is, a terrible deviation from orthodoxy, but I like me some Hawaiian pizza. Ham and wow. pineapple, I, 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 it's tasty. Well, I like the that's... damn thing. I recognize yeah. you're Italian, you're, you're rolling yeah. over in your grave. It's a mortal sin, I believe, yeah. yeah. But, but all right, tell me, all right, have you tried it? I, listen, I was young once. I was young and irresponsible. I tried a little. And tell me, was it good? I know there's something to it. There, look. Oh, okay. I've got a bigger admission. I've got Michael Knowles <laughs> defending pineapple on pizza. That's a much bigger deal. Not all. Listen, there are some things we need to <laughs> constrain our base appetite, Senator. We, that is a conversation for another episode. And Michael, let me just jump in because I made a promise today that I've got to keep. Okay. So uh, on the steps of the Capitol, I met with a junior high class from Roma, Texas. That's down in the Rio Grande Valley in Star County. Mm -hmm. It was a group of probably, I don't know, 30, 30 or 40 junior high kids, eighth grade kids who were on their eighth grade trip to Washington. And I talked with them in the Capitol, great kids, um, and was visiting with them, was asking questions. And they're asking, they asked about Ukraine and what was going on. They asked smart, intelligent questions. These are smart kids. Um, and, and I mentioned the podcast. I said, look, if you want to know what's going on, one vehicle is you can listen to the podcast, and I tried to do my best to explain what's actually happening. And one of the kids said, well, will you mention us on the podcast? Uh, and I said, I'll tell you what, I will. Um, so I'm honoring my promise because wow. I'm, I'm going to keep my word on that. I will tell you one thing that was fascinating. So these are kids from South Texas. South Texas historically has been overwhelmingly Democrat. It is 80 to 90 percent Hispanic. It's voted Democrat for 100 years. Maybe a third of the kids there were wearing Make America Great red hats and were wearing Trump shirts. I mean, it was stunning. Wow. And, and I got to say, this is something that is happening. It's happening in Texas, but it's happening across the country, which is Hispanic voters are moving to the right massively in South Texas. 
which has been Democrat a long, long time. I think in November, South Texas is going to go Republican and we're going to elect uh, several Hispanic Republicans. There are two I've endorsed, Cassie Garcia, who is an Hispanic woman. She, she was on my staff for 10 years. I know Cassie very, very well. She's fantastic. Uh, and then Monica De La Cruz, who was another Hispanic woman. She, they're both running against Democrats in South Texas and seats that have been Democrat forever. And I'm predicting now both of them are going to win. And, and, and it is a sea change. If you can imagine the nightmare for Nancy Pelosi and for AOC to have Hispanic women who are conservative Republicans from the Rio Grande Valley standing up and saying the policies you're enacting are insane, I, I think that's the, the, the kind of red wave we're going to see in November. And shout out to the kids from Roma. Oh, that's a shout out to them. You might have lost us some of the Italian vote with your offensive comments about pizza. But if we can pick up much more of the Hispanic vote, people realize these left wing policies are driving us off a cliff. That would be a wonderful thing. A, a little bit to hold on hope for. But we've got to leave it at that. I'm Michael Knowles. This is Verdict with Ted Cruz. This episode of Verdict with Ted Cruz is being brought to you by Jobs, Freedom, and Security PAC, a political action committee dedicated to supporting conservative causes, organizations, and candidates across the country. In 2022, Jobs, Freedom, and Security PAC plans to donate to conservative candidates running for Congress and help the Republican Party across the nation. If you like this video, you should click the like button, and then you should subscribe, and you should ring the bell, and you will never miss another video.